Myositis is a disease of the muscles that occurs with a frequency of one to four per hundred thousand in the population. It is relatively rare, but because of its rareness and its multiple presentations, it is frequently misdiagnosed. Here we will take a look at a major misdiagnosis and its consequences. A 58-year-old man with a history of type 2 diabetes went to a neurological center for a second opinion on his diagnosis. He was extremely frightened because four years before that, he started noticing difficulty standing from a sitting position and difficulty climbing stairs, for which he went to see a nerve doctor who examined him and ran some tests. The doctor made a diagnosis of deconditioning and prescribed vitamin B12 shots for this patient. Later, the doctor did some further tests in EMG, which is a nerve conduction study on the muscles, and he found that there was weakness in the arms of the patient as well as in the upper back. He then made a diagnosis of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, a fatal disease with a life expectancy of just two to five years. In anticipation of his imminent demise, the man started making preparations for his last rites and burial. Myositis is a condition in which the muscles in the body become inflamed. Inflammation of the muscles may occur from infections, infections with bacteria or viruses or parasites or fungi. This infectious type of myositis occurs most frequently in patients with weak immune systems. Another type of myositis is eosinophilic myositis, which is a condition in which the muscles are infiltrated by certain cells in the blood known as eosinophils. And the numbers of these cells also increase in the blood. The blood count of these cells is higher than usual. This type of myositis can occur in response to exposure to drugs or to parasitic infections or in res as a result of certain cancers, or it may occur without any obvious cause at all. The largest group of myositis is the group called the idiopathic inflammatory myopathies, which include myositis such as dermatomyositis, polymyositis, inclusion body myositis, immune-mediated necrotizing uh, myopathy, and overlap myositis, which includes the antisynthetase syndrome. In the idiopathic inflammatory myopathies, the immune system attacks the body's own tissues. Apart from the inclusion body myositis, which is the most common and occurs more frequently in people over the age of 50, all of these present with weakness in the muscles close to the trunk, a progressive weakness that is symmetrical. The weakness of inclusion body myositis is asymmetric and tends to occur in the muscles that bend the fingers as well as in the thigh muscles. Patients may also experience difficulty swallowing and they may have difficulty pronouncing their words. They may develop a rash or fever, or in some cases, patients can have arthritis of the joints. This all depends on the type of myositis the patient may be suffering from. Myositis can also be warning signs for cancers and a malignancy workup should be done with the exception of the inclusion body myositis, which is generally not associated with cancers. We still do not know what is the exact cause of myositis and myositis, but it may be the result of an interaction of genetic factors as well as environmental factors. Doctors can diagnose the myositis with blood tests and MRIs and nerve conduction studies of the muscles, but the gold standard is the muscle biopsy. The patient described above had a biopsy of his muscle done, 
which provided an accurate diagnosis of inclusion body myositis. Although inclusion body myositis is a chronic incurable disease, the patient could now be referred to physical therapy for his weakness and gait training and to occupational therapy to assist him with his activities of daily living. For his difficulty in swallowing, he could be sent to a speech therapist where he would learn the techniques of proper swallowing as well as the proper consistency of food to prevent aspiration. All of the worry and anxiety that this patient had experienced turned out to be unnecessary and the patient was assured that with his new diagnosis, his life expectancy was not expected to be shorter than normal. All of this could have been avoided had the patient been referred to a neurologic center specializing in neuromuscular diseases from the get-go. I hope you found the video informative. If you liked the video, share with friends and family. Leave your comments in the box below and support the channel by subscribing. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.